Hello and welcome. My name is John Dickinson for Boris FX. And in this Particle Illusion tutorial, we're going to take a basic look at all of the key components of Particle Illusion to get you ready to jump into the more feature specific tutorials. So let's get started. OK, so let's start by getting acquainted with the Particle Illusion interface. Top left, we have the Emitter Preview. Below that is the Emitter Library Browser. To the right is the Controls View. And to the right of that, at the top, is the Stage or Composite View. And below that is the Graph View. The only other main window is the Render and Export Settings, which you can access by clicking on the Render button. And that opens up in a separate window. And although you can't reposition these panels, there are some preset layouts which you can access from the View menu. I'm using the default one here. If I click on Edit, that switches to the Edit View. There's also a Create View and a very handy Browse View. Now the first thing you'll probably do when you launch Particle Illusion is search the emitters. And you can do that down here in the Emitter Library Browser by clicking where it says Search Emitters and typing in your search. I'm looking for sparkles, so SPARK brings up all of the emitters with those letters. And you can see there's a lot of emitters with sparkles. One thing I'll just point out in the preferences, you can also choose to search tags and also display the tags in the emitter library. I'm just going to check those on. Click apply and just research. So now this is searching across the tags that were created when these emitters were saved. And you can see it's also displaying those tags. Now I find having the tags displayed is a bit cluttered. So my preference is to search across the tags, but not display the tags. And click apply. And once you've found the emitter that you want, you can preview it by selecting it and clicking up here in the emitter preview. And to get an idea of how the emitter might look when you animate its position, you can click and drag. And you can literally spend hours just clicking and dragging in this window, it's so much fun. You can see by default, it's displaying at 50% zoom. I just changed that to 100%. And just stop that. Now to add that to the stage, I can just double click. And you'll notice that it's added it right to the center of the stage. And I also now have some parameters in the controls view. You can also add an emitter to the stage by clicking directly on the stage. One thing that I do all the time is if my time indicator isn't at zero and I click on the stage, then it adds that emitter at that time. And if that's not what you want, you can double click to move that back to the beginning. Or once again, under the preferences, you can make that the default behavior by turning on add new objects at frame zero. I'm just going to delete that one. So the stage displays the emitter as it's going to appear in the final output. At the top right, you can see we have a particle count. We have the current time and the duration of this project and also the resolution. Now you can change the duration and the resolution for this project by coming up to the view menu and choosing project settings. And here you can enter your own values or you can choose a preset. Top left, we have the stage view zoom. So you can choose an option from here, or if you have a mouse wheel, you can just roll in and out, which is something that I prefer. Next to that, we have the preview background. You may like to preview your particles over a checkerboard. To the right of that, we have the motion blur toggle and the heads up display toggle. Next to that, we have the deflector and force options, which you'd click and then click on the stage to add a deflector or force. And to the right of that, we have the render button. On the stage itself, we have this gray box, and this is the viewable area. If I click on an emitter and drag, if I go outside the viewable area, then we can't see the particles. And holding down the space bar and clicking gives you the hand grabber tool where you can pan the entire stage. And as I mentioned, once you add the emitter to the stage, its controls appear in the controls view. 
And this sparkle smoke is a basic emitter, so it has three levels. The top level is the layer, and it only has a couple of controls, position X, Y, and angle. And you can use these to change the position and the angle of all of the emitters in this layer. The next level is the emitter itself, and the emitter has its own properties, which include things like shape. Beneath properties are a number of different parameters, and many of these are scale factor parameters, things like life, number, size, velocity, weight, and spin. And these scale the similarly named parameters inside the particle. The third level is the particle itself, and you can see it also has properties. Particle properties include things like shape image. If I click that, it opens up the particle shape editor, and here I can choose different shapes. And things like color, where I can change the color of the particle, including using a gradient, and alpha, which is to do with the particle's opacity over life. And beneath properties are the parameters, including the over life parameters. And all of this is covered in much more detail in the Understanding Controls tutorial. For now, I'm just going to close this up. And next, let's add a force to the stage. I can do that by clicking on the force button and then just clicking on the stage. And you can see already that that force is having some influence over the particles. The default force type is an area type. You've also got grid and point. If I increase the strength, it will push the particles in the direction of the arrow. Just like that. And you can also control things like direction and angle. So forces are a powerful way to move particles around your stage. I'll just leave that there for a moment and add a deflector by clicking and then double clicking. When the particles hit the deflector, they bounce off. You can see how that smoke is bouncing off. You can learn a lot more about how forces and deflectors work by checking out the Understanding Forces and Deflectors tutorial. For now, I'm just going to delete these. Let's just bring this back to the start and talk about the graph view. And the graph view is where you adjust your keyframe timing to fine tune your particle simulations. If I, for example, wanted to animate the weight of the particles, I could set a linear keyframe and then move in time a little bit and then increase the weight amount. And just play that back. So the particles start to get heavier when they hit this first keyframe and they continue to increase in weight until they hit that second keyframe where they maintain that weight. It's going to remove those keyframes by choosing constant. I can also set keyframes for the position of the emitter. Come down here and turn on toggle animate static mode. And then move my emitter on the stage. You can see it creates a motion path. The first keyframe is actually created at frame zero. Just toggle that off again. And the particle moves along the path. I can change the timing just by dragging that second keyframe a little closer. Just like that. And we'll look at the graph view in a lot more detail in the Understanding Graph View tutorial. Once you finish setting up your simulation, you come up and click the Render button. And here in the Render window, you can choose a codec. You can also change the resolution, change the frame rate, and various other settings. And we cover this in more detail in the Understanding Rendering tutorial. Okay, so the last thing I want to mention is preferences versus project settings when it comes to resolution and frame rate. Come to the View menu and come down to Project Settings. You can see in the project settings, we can change the current project stage size. In the preferences, we can change the default stage size. So this is for new projects. So if you know you're always going to work at 1920 by 1080 and a frame rate of 30, just leave that at its default settings. And every time you create a particle illusion project, it will use these settings. Okay, so that should give you a pretty good overall basic understanding of particle illusion. And you should be ready to jump into the more detailed feature-specific tutorials. 
You can download Particle Illusion standalone for free at borisfx.com, including thousands of free particle emitter presets. Continue watching this Getting Started tutorial series to learn more about what you can do with Particle Illusion and find out more about the plugin version of Particle Illusion with extra features, including built in Mocha Motion Tracking, at borisfx.com.